<coughs> I'm going to take uh, un Uncle Albert's um, lead and say, distinguished guests, as you all are. Is that okay? Closer? Okay. We're meeting on the traditional lands of the Yugarapul and Yagara people. I honour their elders, past and present, and the many other wonderful elders who are here today. Associate Professor Noel Heyman, he's disappeared, he's up, oh here he is, he's he picked out his painting, picked out his painting. Uh, Queensland Australian of the Year 2011, winner of the inaugural Australians for Native Title and Reconciliation Close the Gap Indigenous Health Award and winner of the 14th Deadly Award for Outstanding Achievement in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Health. Thank you for that great um, presentation. I've got a question for you. Is having a Deadly Award a problem for a doctor in a medical centre? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that inspiring address about your work as Director of the Inala Indigenous Health Service and its phenomenal success. In one decade, you, as the first Aboriginal doctor from UQ, have helped to increase patient numbers from an embarrassing 12 to 6,000. So we reckon we could certainly do with you on side at Humber Yumba. How appropriate that you and through you the health service have now forged this link with Himba Yumba. Why do we need Himba Yumba and your support? Let me give you 12 good reasons. The 2006 census revealed that Indigenous Australians comprise 2.3% of the population, 90% of those are Aboriginal, 6% are Torres Strait Islander and 4% identify as both. Queensland's Indigenous population is comparatively large. 28% of the total Australian Indigenous population lives in Queensland. They comprise 3.5% of Queensland's total population. Almost one third of Indigenous people reside in major cities like Brisbane. First reason, there is a real need for Himbi Yumba. In business terms, a market opportunity, Mr Simithambi, here in the Brisbane Ipswich Corridor. The census also found that most Indigenous people identified with a clan, tribal or language group. The data suggests that culture and language remain significant to Indigenous Australians. Second reason, Himbi Yumba will be a centre of Indigenous language and culture, a proud resource for the Indigenous and broader community. Himbi Yumba has as its centre a fine school for children from prep to grade 12. The 2006 census showed that Indigenous retention rates at school remain considerably lower than for non-Indigenous students, although the disparity is lessening. Rates of year 12 completion improved in Queensland from 26 to 30 per cent between 2001 and 2006. But even so, in, two, in 2006, Australian indig indigenous, indigenous Australians were only half as likely as non-Indigenous Australians to complete year 12, the same as in 2001. So the third reason, Himbi Yumba will help close the gap between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians in education. Linking with Professor Heyman's presentation, higher education is associated with improvements in long-term health. Indigenous people who completed year 12 were about half as likely to suffer diabetes or cardiovascular disease as those who had left school at year nine or below. They were also less likely to report eye or sight problems, osteoporosis and kidney disease. Fourth reason, Himba Yumba will help close the gap between Indigenous Australians in health. In 2006, Queensland had the largest number in Australia of overcrowded Indigenous households, 6,200. Fifth reason, Himbi Yumba will help address overcrowded Indigenous households on multiple levels, especially with our proposed boarding facilities. In 2006, the average equivalised incomes for Indigenous Australians were 69% of the corresponding incomes for non-Indigenous Australians. 43% of all Indigenous Australians aged 15 to 64 were not in the labour force, compared to 24% for non-Indigenous Australians. Indigenous Australians were twice as likely to work part-time and more likely to work in low-skilled occupations without tertiary qualifications. Sixth reason, Himbi Yumba will educate its students so that they go on to tertiary education and well-paid permanent jobs in the workforce. It will provide a supportive environment, not just for school-age students, but also for adult Indigenous people to access educational programs and return to the workforce, especially through its proposed creche. Himbi Yumba will itself provide employment for numerous Indigenous people. Now, perhaps the bleakest data from the 2006 census concerned the criminal justice system, something that Noel also touched on. Almost 20 years ago, the Royal Commission into Aboriginal Deaths in Custody reported that Aboriginal people made up 14% of the total prison population 
and were 15 times more likely to be in prison than non-Aboriginal Australians. Now, despite the implementation of many of the recommendations of that report, things have got worse. As at 30 June 2008, Indigenous prisoners represented 24% of prisoners. The Indigenous female imprisonment rate increased by a shocking 34% between 2002 and 2006, while the imprisonment rate for Indigenous men increased by 22%. Indigenous Australian women are 23 times more likely to be imprisoned than non-Indigenous women. Indigenous Australian men are 16 times more likely to be imprisoned than non-Indigenous men. Seventh reason, Himbiyamba will provide early intervention and an holistic approach to disadvantaged young Indigenous people and their families, educating them and diverting them from the criminal justice system. This will create a huge economic saving to the broader community. The census noted that the rate of indige <coughs> Indigenous children placed in care and protection orders was around seven times the rate for other Australian children. Eighth reason, Himbiyamba's holistic approach supports families as well as school children. Our proposed creche will be a vital part of this holistic approach. This will directly reduce the need for Indigenous children to be placed in care. The Human Rights and Equal Opportunity Commission emphasises the economic benefit to all Australians in improving the quality of life of Indigenous Australians. It will result in increased real GDP through more Indigenous Australians in higher skilled and better paid jobs with less economic burden on the health and social security system. My lifetime experience suggests that it will also result in a drop in Indigenous representation in the notoriously costly prison system. So ninth reason, Himba Yamba will bring direct economic benefits in improving the quality of life of its students and their families, and even greater indirect economic benefits to the broader community. Himba Yamba makes good economic sense. Australia's past Indigenous child removal practices may have been well-intentioned, but they have had and continue to have a devastating impact. The Human Rights Commission reports that of a recent survey of Western Australian Aboriginal people, 35.3% lived in households where a carer or a carer's parent was reported to have been forcibly separated from their natural family. Those carers were between one and a half to two times more likely than others to suffer from dysfunctional problems, including arrest on criminal charges, alcohol abuse, gambling problems, and mental health issues. Further, they had poorer parenting skills. Their children were more likely to be at high risk of clinically significant emotional behavioral difficulties than those whose carers were not forcibly separated from the family. Tenth reason, Himbiyamba will help support carers and parents who have suffered from for forcible separation and assist them in their caring and parental roles. All too often, we hear only of those Indigenous people who through decades of dispossession and inappropriate government policy have succumbed to alcohol and substance abuse and gambling. We all know here that there are so many positive aspects of Indigenous culture to be celebrated and from which the broader Australian community can benefit. Kinship, family bonds and respect, language, rich oral and artistic traditions, responsibilities and historical connections, especially to the land, and spirituality. It is these aspects of the world's most ancient living culture that makes Australia unique in an increasingly globalised world of bland sameness. Eleventh reason, Himbiyamba will provide a link for non-Indigenous Australians to the wondrous aspects of Indigenous language and culture, enriching the entire Australian community. The broadstream Australian community will benefit from greater participation of Indigenous women in Australian public life. As highly respected Indigenous academic Marcia Langton states, it is time to listen to the black woman in the plain dress with the soft voice and her quietly spoken sisters and brothers rather than the noisy bullies. Twelfth reason, during the decades to come, Himba Yamba will be educating thousands of clever Indigenous girls, young women and boys helping them find their voices so that they can contribute to Australian public life and become CEOs and directors of leading public companies, doctors, engineers, politicians, bankers, judges, lawyers, educators, tomorrow's Noel Hamans. For these 12 reasons, I urge you for the benefit of the entire community to do what you can to ensure the Himba, U Himba Yamba Community Hub becomes an established institution in the Brisbane Ipswich area. Thank you again, Professor Heyman, for the great contribution you are making to the Indigenous community, and of course, by which you are also enriching the broader Australian community. Your example and your address today was inspiring. As co-patron of the Himbiyamba Community Hub and on behalf of the Searchlight Education Board, 
I look forward to many years of working with you and your health service in partnership to close those shameful gaps I have mentioned. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in the customary way in thanking Professor Noel Heyman.